and came. Skirt <laughs> came. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three, where we're going to talk about healthy boundary setting. Um, so we just have some kind of bullet points that we thought we would cover. It's going to be a very much more conversational episode. Um, I have some things maybe about like family, your home, your children, because boundaries aren't necessarily just maybe what you would originally think of them. Also boundaries with like social media and uh, screen time, stuff like that. So um, the very first thing that I wanted to touch on is you are in control of what or who you allow in your space. And your space can be like your physical space, obviously, but your mind, your home, um, things like that. You are ultimately in control of that. And I think that's something that especially maybe now is, is tough because you're inundated with all the things, especially with social media, like in the news and all like you're in control of those things. Like you can, it's just as easy to get sucked into it, but it's just as easy to just turn it off. So that I think is like a huge thing that I wanted to touch on first is just remembering that you are the one that is in control. <laughs> you are the gatekeeper to your home. Yes, yes. Um, but also you can't be unrealistic. Um, you can't be so rigid about every single little thing. Um, so you just kind of have to figure out what is truly important to you as far as like keeping and holding those boundaries because I know we all have like this is exactly the way that I want everything to go and that's just super not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's not realistic so yeah. not beating yourself up about that either um and then knowing that you can't change people um which is is tough and that you aren't in control of other people's perceptions of you so Setting boundaries can be really uncomfy sometimes, especially in um, like families or with like really close friends. Um, but just because you're having those uncomfy conversations doesn't mean that it's not super valuable to do and you're not in control of other people's um, reaction about that or their perception of you know why you have to do these things. So um, that's why you do them, right? Yeah. Um, so one thing that, that is important for me is, um, not getting sucked into my phone. Mm, um, guilty. It's so <laughs> hard. Are you talking about me? <laughs> it's so hard because it's right there all the time. We come up with these excuses of why we need our phone in the same room with us or attached to our bodies or mm -hmm. like just within arm's reach. Um, but it, it's so hard because you don't need to be available to people all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, like. I'm, I'm not the kind of person who, if you text me, I'm not, I might not text you back right away. And, and it's tough because even sometimes like I'll text my husband. I'm like, I know that you're not doing anything. Why aren't you texting me back? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> you want that, but also you, you know, so that, that's really hard. So I have, um, which is like a recent thing is I put the, um, screen time um, reminder thing mm. on my phone so it like <clears throat> tracks my screen time throughout the week and then on Sunday morning I get a aver like an average and it's like rates my average screen time throughout the week and it compares it to last week like you're up 10% from last week or you're down and this is your average daily time that you were on your screen and if you're listening to podcasts or if you're listening to music or um, like certain things it doesn't you know, charge, it doesn't like count that against you. But if you're literally just like mindlessly scrolling, it's like, you did a bad job this week, Danielle, <laughs> or <laughs> you did really good. Um, and then I know that, and I just recently learned this from one of my friends on her Instagram stories is you can set limits in your phone per app. Mm. So like you can give yourself 45 minutes of Instagram time. And then once your 45 minutes are up, a little um, notification will show up on your phone and it's like you've reached your limit so it's just like that conscious reminder of like oh man I've been sitting here for 45 minutes like that's yeah. not great yep. um, so I thought that was really cool that is interesting and it also gets me anxiety because <laughs> you know, I feel like you're talking directly to me <laughs> now my husband is going to listen to this podcast and be like yup 
<laughs> he's gonna agree to yep you're him and he's you um yeah definitely too good I I thank God for my husband though because he he brings it to my attention like he yeah. will kind of he'll let me know if I'm on my phone a little bit too much and I do I'm guilty of that I get sucked in whether mm -hmm. it's for you know the businesses or any of the things or just yeah. the mindless scrolling or okay you know the kids are crazy today and they finally went to bed and I just want to like think about something that's like that's so great mind. I want to watch these funny memes and yeah. these reels and then I forget that my husband is sitting right next to me and mm -hmm. oh wait you're funny and I love you and we could be <laughs> having conversations you know and I definitely think that there's like a time and a place for it it's nice right. there's like a, a, a sense of like relief from just being able to like catch up with friends and all of that, but at the same time and more commonly, I think it's an overconsumption right. for sure, which again, I, I can definitely work on it. I'm gonna have you put these things on my phone, <laughs> which is so scary and so sad, but if it's scary and sad, it means you need it. So, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, you'll have to uh, download that for me. <laughs> um, my, my report came up this morning, it was like, you were up 13% from last week, and I was like, and it makes me like pause and reflect and think back, like, what was I doing? You started uh, an Instagram account. Well, so. but it was, that, it was that, and it was trying to figure out how do you do a how podcast? How do you set up a podcast? How yeah. do you get your podcast on these different platforms? Yeah. And how, like, and, and it, it truly was that because yeah. I really, really, especially with Sage, like, she already is like mamas and dadas, and she'll like grab our phone mm -hmm. and she like wants to see like pictures of herself. And, like, mm -hmm. we let her like. FaceTime, my parents live in Pennsylvania, and so they don't get to see her in person very often, so we do, like, FaceTime, but yeah. she knows that, like, the phone does things, and it's cool, and, like, she sees that we, like, touch our phones, and I'm like, you're 18 months old, and you already know how to, like, open my yeah. phone, and you know how to, like, if you swipe this yep. way, it, like, brings the camera up, and I'm like, ugh, I don't yep. like that. She we... learned how to use a remote this week, and, and I don't know why <laughs> that freaked me out. She's like, Mom, look what I put on Netflix. I was like, you did what? <laughs> how, how, I'm like, okay. You can't even okay. read. Yeah, like, she asked me to shower one day, and, and mm -hmm. I did just real quick. I really didn't think she was going to pick up on it. Right. I thought this was one of those quick, you know, attention span of three seconds yeah. on to the next thing. And nope. now she comes in and puts on Netflix. I'm like, all right, now we have to uh, figure this out. So, Hi, the remote. Yeah. I don't know. We run out of batteries. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a conversation. Again, yeah. kind of same thing like we're yeah. having, kind of limiting it and set a healthy boundary. She may yeah. not love it, and I'm right. interested to see her response because she's a salty, sweet kid. You know yeah. what you're going to get. She's, she, she runs hot on both ends, super sweet or super salty, and she's a big personality, so we will see. But um, kind of, yeah, getting back to the boundary thing, like that – is something that right. you just brought up now. I'm like, oh shoot, yeah, it's probably an area that could set the boundary that yeah. I'm not necessarily looking forward to doing with her because right. I can only assume what the reaction will be. But yeah, I mean, it's not not great for her every single time she comes inside right. to throw on Netflix. You know, like, this is the habit that's being created. Yeah. And this <laughs> is why that's not okay, or this is why we limit that. Yes, um, and even just last week our episode was about food and so that's something that's really important with us too is teaching sage um these are the foods that we direct towards and this is the reasoning why like making them a part of the conversation though so it's like these are boundaries mm -hmm. this is why though mm -hmm. um so it's not just well because i said so because yeah. <laughs> that doesn't go well especially depending on like personality if you have like a big personality child which we both do. Yep. <laughs> and so it's like Go if ahead. they're involved in the conversation and if they understand the reasoning behind it, then they're more inclined to respect the boundary or, you know, to listen to it or they're, they're learning too. And it's like, okay, well, this is important because, and I know this, so it's, it, I think helps. Yes. Well, hopefully we'll see. Tate is and not well, at that age yet. So. Shay, no, it 100% does because Shay, I can't tell you how many times will go and grab something from the fridge or the cabinet and look at me and the question every single time is, mommy, is this healthy? And I give her a response, oh, yes or no, or, or if it's like those healthy Oreos that yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you know, it's not healthy, sweetheart, but it's healthy-er, it's healthy-ish, right. it's healthy if that's your one snack you know, of the right. day or whatever the case right. is. So it definitely does stick and she's four. So yeah. she, she's definitely picking up on it. Um, I, I love though too, that it's not, you know, not, not creating awareness in a bad way about food either. Mm -hmm. She's not like afraid of food right. that's unhealthy. Like she'll ask, like every time we pass like a Wendy, she's like, mommy, Wendy's. I'm like, nope, but <laughs> keep going. But you know, um, 
it, it's like it's awareness. she understands because I don't just tell her no and then that's it. Right. It's no because it's gonna it might give you a tummy ache because and and right. we, we actually talk, I talk with her yeah. and like like she's a human you know not just a child right. and she's going to absorb some of that information and some not right but. I'm like there, exactly, I'm there to, that's who you come to to ask these questions and right. learn these things from, and you're not going to learn overnight, We're, we'll get there slowly, I have a whole lifetime with right. each other to, to, to get there, so, absolutely, yeah, so I, that's kind of cool, like, you hitting on those topics, so, again, when we pick these topics, you guys, we don't sit down, Danielle and I, and talk about what we're going to say no. beforehand, so, on purpose, <laughs> yeah, for this reason, like, when we were talking about boundaries, I was thinking, like, just relational, but now you're talking about boundaries with food, and boundaries with, like, technology, and stuff like that, never even crossed my mind, again, like, now I need a, a timer <laughs> on my phone, and now I need, you know, all these things, everything. yeah, <laughs> she, took, she sucked all the fun out, but, no, like, honestly, those are real things that I now can think about tonight, and, and digest and kind of go over so um, I'm happy that you shared that yeah. um, a couple of things that I have with boundaries is that um, for me personally um, I've gotten really good now at setting healthy boundaries but it was <laughs> not always hard. that right it's yeah. so hard and it's so uncomfy yeah it was not especially my personality type um, I like people to like me yeah. because I like a lot of people and that's just my energy and I'm bubbly and happy and positive so like when somebody doesn't like me because I said something they don't like uh, my personality type is like, oh my gosh, like I don't want them to feel uncomfortable or I don't want them not to like me or, or something like that. And that's, again, definitely something that is a blessing and a curse, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can be very relational and help people feel good and, and all these great things. But um, I also, one thing that I heard once that stuck with me is that if you wouldn't take advice from somebody, don't listen to their criticism. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if you don't like a boundary that I've set, you know, it, it, I don't always have to be okay. You know, yeah. or, or I do have to be okay with you just not being okay with it. Right. And that just is what it is. Yeah. Right. And growing that thick skin for me what was a little tough. That This took years of practice. This was not an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. This is definitely something that even still to this day in certain situations, right. I feel I feel that insecurity come up of like, ooh, they're doing that thing and I don't like that thing. That's a boundary for me. Mm -hmm. What do I say? What do I do? How do I navigate this so I don't hurt anyone's feelings, right? And I think that's important too is like there, there are areas like maybe at work you're like, no, mm -hmm. this is the way that it is and you have no issues with being that but then that translating into your personal life it can be like all of a sudden you're like oh yeah I have second. to see them again tomorrow uh, <laughs> yeah. how do I deliver this yeah like, it's not just as kind of cut and dry but um one thing that I definitely learned as I got better at setting these boundaries is how much more stress-free my life is right so if I don't have boundaries people don't know what to expect. I've, I've not created any expectation. Right. right. Like we are now a household where um, if you come into my house, we have water. We have, we have Berkey water specifically Same. for you. Yep. Um, and when people ask for soda or, or all these things and we don't have it, they used to be a little taken aback of like, yep. oh, we're here for a dinner party. We're here for Thanksgiving or whatever right. it is. And she is water. Right. Like, um, it's like, yeah, absolutely. Like, raw milk now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> raw milk. You know, I can go get you some from the cow. Um, but yeah, like, so even like like food boundaries and, and things like that, like I vote with my dollars. And yep. even though you're coming over for a dinner party, I love you very much, but I'm not going to buy you soda. I'm not going to buy you sugared up juice and all of those things. Yeah. If you want to bring that to my house, judge totally me free. Fine. Totally fine. I do not mind in the slightest. I will not bat an eye. That mm -hmm. does not phase me, doesn't bother me. I like to pride myself on being not judgmental yeah. because again everybody's doing the best they can with what they know right you do the exact same thing but yeah. when you come over that's just kind of what happens so now when you come over for dinner parties sometimes people will bring a beverage yeah. of choice and that's perfectly fine yeah. right but that's that's you know a food boundary right there and yeah. an expectation right yeah and then the other thing too is especially when it comes to like raising your kids like we raise yeah. our kids in a certain way that mm -hmm. isn't always the most widely accepted way just in the sense again of like they, they're not getting sugar all the time and not a ton of screen time and um you know i'm not going to give my kid tylenol as my first go-to right. you know cabinetry grab it, that's not going to happen so 
those are firm boundaries. And when it comes to your kid, I feel like those boundaries are even bolder, right? Yeah. Like if there's any area in my life that I am going to speak out and, yeah. and you're going to hear my, my, my stance on that situation, it comes down to my kids. Right. Because my boundaries that I have set in place are highly... They're, they're, a, they're a feeling based situation and a gut based that that mama bear kind of gut feeling absolutely drives that but research just yeah. diving in researching understanding why Tylenol is not my first grab right. or really ever a grab yeah. but. <laughs> um, but in many households it is you know slight fever oh to give her Tylenol I've heard I can't tell you how many times I've heard that and it's just for me oh uh, I, okay thanks you know, we don't do Tylenol but thank you right yeah. is usually my thing because I, I want you to be aware that we don't do Tylenol, right. right? So if you're ever hanging out or watching my kid, we're not, way, don't, we don't, don't look that. for Tylenol. It's not in the house, right? <laughs> yep. Don't go to the store and get it. No. Um, so bring your own Tylenol with your soda. <laughs> yeah, but for you. Yeah, yeah. Don't give it to my kid. Um, but yeah, those are boundaries that we, yep. we set. And for me, those were definitely the hardest, right? So... You know, when it comes to family and friends and even like nannies or babysitters, just different things like that. When any, when any boundary setting comes into play with children, I definitely feel like for, for both parties, but definitely the moms. I feel like the moms are a little bit more the researchers and, and the diver, divers and, and, and all of that. And um, not to say that husbands don't, because they absolutely do. But I'm saying generally. It starts usually yes. with the mom. Exactly. Yes. yes. You know, saying something. And so I feel like that's where we're fierce. And that's where sometimes we definitely can be judged. You know, oh, if yeah. people don't agree with, oh, well, she, you know, because didn't they get her and all. And, and, you know, and, and they think it's one way. But again, you have to look back and go, they are just making that assumption based on what they know, right? I have this source of information. They have grown up on that source of information. And it is okay to disagree on that. But it's my kid. We're going to go with my way. Well, and I think also a lot of the judgment too comes from, I assume that you're judging me. Mm. So I'm judging you. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and, and that can be with food too is like, if you want to eat McDonald's, that's fine. Yeah. I don't eat that. I yeah. I don't care. I wish that you would make healthier choices, mm -hmm. but like you can do that. I I'm just gonna choose not to. Yeah. And then it's like, ooh, that feels uncomfy. Are they <laughs> judging me? I don't know. But it's like, yeah. But, but you're judging me because I don't, and that mm -hmm. that's uncomfy too. Um. But so it it yeah. is like a lot of assumptions which mm -hmm. creates the yes. uncomfiness even more. Don't want to assume, and that's where yeah. communication comes yes. in. Like you really have to to yeah. be okay with having the uncomfortable situation, uh, uh, uncomfortable yes. conversation, yeah. so that the you situation. can really make sure that your the boundaries that you're setting and the expectations that you're setting are clear, right? And because understood. If, exactly. Yes. Because if that person just simply does not know and then mm -hmm. does that thing, you know, gives a katana or whatever, if they, right. they don't know and you never told them. You can't really That's be not mad. fair. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can be mad at the situation, like, ah, oh, right. it didn't happen, but you, you really, it's unfair to be mad at right. that person. So, having yeah. those uncomfortable conversations, and the way I look at it, at, um, you know, setting healthy boundaries, the way I look at it is that it's pretty much like a muscle that you have to work on and practice and strengthen and, mm -hmm. and all of that. Because if you are like not. If, if, if you haven't had to do it in a while, that time when it pops up, those, those nerves creep yeah. back in, right? Like, <laughs> oh. again, I'm pretty established with my family and my friends. They know who we are. They know what we are. They know right. what we do. That I really don't have to work on setting boundaries. Thankfully, like, it's usually, to, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's an understood thing. But then, you know, moving somewhere new and meeting new people, sometimes they don't know, you know, certain things. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, I have to have that conversation again. <laughs> like, super. That's weird, <laughs> you know, but... Again, it, it comes worth down it. to it being yeah. worth it. Absolutely. A boundary that we have too with Sage, like speaking on the setting boundaries with your kids is consent. And mm -hmm. so if she doesn't want to give you a hug, we don't force her. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't want to sit on your lap, we're not going to force her. Yep. If she doesn't want to say hi to you, we're not going to force her. We're going to yep. give her options of do you want to do a high five or what about... Like a fist bump, or can you wave, or okay, maybe next time. Then. She might do none. Yeah. She might just stare at you. I've gotten a couple of <laughs> stares. So I'm like, all right, Sage, I still love you. Yes. Yeah, but it's like that's something that can easily be taken as like, well, you're letting her be rude, mm -hmm. or you're letting her be. And it's like, no, I'm teaching her that she has bodily autonomy. Mm -hmm. She's in control again of who is in her space, and if she mm -hmm. feels uncomfortable, I'm not going to force that. Um, and that can be tough, especially with like older people who are used to, and it's like, they come from such like a sweet place. They're like, Oh, just come sit with me. And she's like, and she will straight up shake her head. Be like, Nope, 
I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. So she, and, and I love, I love that you guys do that, especially at such a young age. Cause you see that all the time. Like just, just in passing in a store, like a stranger will say hi to a kid. Yeah. And if the kid doesn't say hi, you see the mom or the dad be like, well, say hi. Well, come on. Why didn't you say yeah. hi? You know? And there's been times like with friends where they'll, they'll say hi to Shay or something like that. And I'm like, say hi. And, and she does it. And I'm like, why are you saying? And I catch yeah. myself. I'm like, ooh, no, no, no. Like, because she didn't want that. to. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and then maybe later we talk about it. Like, hey, like, why didn't you say hi? Or you, but that's your friend. Why didn't? And usually there's a reason. Right. Maybe she didn't want to today. Or, mm -hmm. what, and the, or I, you know, I'm, I'm tired, mommy. There's yeah. usually a reason that maybe in the moment. Like, it was too much. I wish she would have said yeah. hi. I was a little embarrassed that she didn't say hi. But that. I will take that over forcing her to, yeah. to, you know, remove a boundary to, to say hi or to right. make herself more available. Right. So you so have that's to huge. hug this person. Yeah. Like, no. Mm -mm. Stuff like that. I'm like, mm -mm. Oh, no. Yeah. No, we can just say yeah. hi on yeah. that one. Um, but yeah, so I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, one thing really quick that my pastor actually said today in church, which I was like, Oh, this is, this is good for the podcast. Oh, nice. Um, he said, Every relationship becomes robotic if you do not deepen it on a daily basis. Mm. And the reason I liked that and for this podcast today is because setting boundaries as hard as it is, I think deepens and strengthens yes. relationships. Agreed. Because now we have communication and now we have more of an understanding for one another. And Your even if we don't agree with it, it's still, I feel like... You have at least a common ground of mm -hmm. they gave me the courtesy to tell me to talk to me about it, mm -hmm. right? So when he said that today, I was like, "That's good." Write this down. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, and and again, like having having setting boundaries and having those conversations, it's a muscle you have to practice right. and and keep it strong. And you know, the more that you do it, kind of like with muscle memory, it becomes a lot easier. You know, again, the first few times I had to set a boundary, like I darn near choked on my tongue. I was like, oh my God, I was sweating. I was red. I was like, please don't hate me. Yeah. But now I'm at a place where, again, every now and then it's still a little uncomfy, but for the most part, it just happens without me even realizing I'm doing right. it. It's just a way of life now, mm -hmm. right? Because again, I understand the benefit of it. Right. Um, it reduces stress in our lives. It creates expectations in relationship. It strengthens our relationships with other people. Um, just makes us happier and more cozy and content yeah. in our life, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have on that for today. What yeah. about you? I, yeah, I think that's all I have too. Awesome, I love it. So <laughs> that is it for today, you guys. Join us next week. We actually have a special guest. It yeah. is Danielle's husband, Nick. He is going to be talking about tactical, you know, gear. What, what really is he talking about? He's very excited. <laughs> he has a note in his phone already. I'm like, yo, week, you're good. <laughs> um, he is going to talk about um, preparedness and mm -hmm. just different areas in your life that you can be prepared. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just leave it at that because I think he, he has like a... a he has a bunch of topics he yes. wants to discuss. So it'll probably end up being a longer one, which I'm kind of excited for too. But um, he's very passionate about um, being prepared and being, um, I don't even know how to describe it, just being ready and like being that like protector of your family mm. and having these skills and knowing how to take care of yourself in different situations and like situal, situational awareness. Mm. Uh, just just that kind of that kind of but I, but I told him I was like dumb it down <laughs> I love it for me yes just just <laughs> give people a really easily consumable um if this is something that you're interested in um just kind of overview of of topics so I think awesome. it'll be a good one yeah yeah that'll be exciting so yeah. yeah stay tuned for that next week we appreciate you guys listening um if you haven't already give us a follow on instagram the living roots podcast and yeah, we will, um, we'll catch you guys next week. For sure. Woohoo!